Greetings. This Bible study is going to be on how Jesus offends sinners and religious people. But before we start getting into the Bible study itself, let us define what the word offend and offensive and what have you, the other root words, what it means. If you take a look at Webster's Dictionary, the 1828 edition, that was the original, this guy was a true Bible scholar. He knew Greek, which is what the New Testament was written in. He knew Hebrew, which is what the Old Testament was written in. He knew Latin, which is about 20 to 25 percent of where the words of Europe and the English language comes from. He knew, I think, Italian, Spanish. I mean, the guy was just a scholar. He was more than just a scholar who knew a lot of words. He was what was called a linguist. A, a linguist is a couple steps beyond. That's sort of like Somebody that multi uh, knows multiple languages. But a linguist is somebody that, for example, has like a, a doctorate in languages. A PhD, so to speak. So let's take a look. Offend. It's a transitive verb. It comes from the Latin, offendo. And it means to hit or strike, or thrust against. And this is where we get the word for fence. You know, it's always been said that good fences make good neighbors. Uh, if you fend off an attack, that means you repel an attack. Uh, it means, okay, it means to attack. It also means to displease somebody not to you know not to make them happy but rather to make them unhappy to make them angry an affront but it's it's not it, it's a lesser degree of being angry you know you go to somebody's house for dinner and they make it you know spend hours and hours and hours preparing a meal and you say nah eh, the food's okay this is not one of your best meals. You know, they, they could be offended. But that's lesser than saying, oh, this meal is terrible. How could you serve this to us? Ugh. You know, that that's different than offending somebody. That's, you know, that would make them very angry, which offending somebody is a lesser degree of making them angry. We are offended by rudeness and harsh language. Children offend their parents by disobedience, okay? Let's see. Uh, it could also mean to offend by uh, the law, by violating them, by breaking the law, whether it be the laws of the government or the laws of God, like the Ten Commandments. It could mean to disturb, annoy, or cause to fall or stumble. And let's see. All right, to uh, to cause dislike, and also you could offend a human by mildly insulting them, or we can offend the Lord God by breaking His laws. In 2 Chronicles 28, verse 13, And he said unto them, Ye shall not bring in the captives hither, hither for whereas we have, have, we have offended against the Lord already, ye intend to add more to our sins and to our trespass, for our trespass is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. Okay, so now you know what offend means. Let's take a look 
at what Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew 11 and verse 6, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Do the words of Jesus offend you? They offend many. They offend unbelievers. They offend the Jews. They sure do. Matter of fact, if you look in the Jewish encyclopedia, you look up under Jesus, you probably won't find much. But they don't call him Jesus. They call him Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U. And it means, may his name be blotted out from under heaven, or the cursed one. And then the Hebrew roots people will add an A after that name, Yeshua, or a U-A, or an A. But uh, if you look up Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U, in the Jewish Encyclopedia, you will find that they say that he was the most evil anti-Semite that ever lived. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Think about that. Isaiah 8 and verse 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary. And who's this talking about? The coming of the Messiah, the Christ. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling. And for a rock of offense. To both the houses of Israel and a jinn and for a snare to the inhabitants of of Jerusalem. And that's Judah, by the way. Now, for those of you who don't know it, Ephraim was a tribe of northern Israel. In Hosea chapter 13 and verse 1, when Ephraim spake trembling, in other words, when he was afraid to speak, when Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, or Baal, he died. Baal was the name of, well, it basically meant Lord. And there was a time when they called the God of the Bible Lord, or Baal. But it became so widely used among those that were practicing Satanism, that came to the point where the Lord says, don't call me that anymore. So, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 29, Jesus said, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable, profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So if you got a man that's always checking out other women, the good-looking ones, you know, maybe it would be better to be blind than to go to hell, right? Verse 30, And if thy right hand defend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 41, the Son of Man, and that's Christ, okay, God coming in the flesh, he called himself the Son of Man because, after all, he was the second Adam, he came in human flesh. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. And iniquity is sin, people. So all the things that offend Jesus, they're going to be gathered out by the angels.
All right, let's take a look at another wonderful verse. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. All right, let's take a look at Matthew 13 and verse 54. And when he was come into his own country, you're talking about Jesus, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? In other words, he didn't go to the Bible college. He was the son of a carpenter. Where'd he get all this stuff from? Verse 57. And they were offended in him. They were offended because Christ seemed to know more. Jesus knew more than they did. And they were offended him in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. So a prophet's not without honor except where he lives, you know, save in his own country and in his own house. And have you ever heard the saying, familiarity breeds contempt? That's why in the army they won't let the officers fraternize with the enlisted men. Because in the army, when you give an order, under especially in combat, you don't want a bunch of people saying, oh, why are we doing this? You know, when bombs are coming down, raining down from the sky, and you say, hit the dirt, get in the, you know, crawl in the holes, you don't want them standing there going, uh, why do you want us to... to lie down uh what's the purpose of that and then you know the bombs start exploding and the next thing you know they're all dead because they wouldn't listen familiarity breeds contempt obviously jesus grew up with all these people verse 58 and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Jesus was doing miracles everywhere else, but he wouldn't do it there because they didn't believe him. Isn't that sad? Blind people could have been made to see. Lame people could have been made to walk. Those that were possessed of devils could have been set free. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. A prophet is not without honor save in his own country and in his own house. Oh, and is not this, is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Remember that the next time the Catholics say, oh, well, Mary was a perpetual virgin. Oh, well, these were not really his brothers and sisters. You know, the Bible says they were, but, you know, the Bible's wrong. Really, they were cousins, you know. That's what the Catholics teach this stuff. I mean, they teach Mary was a perpetual virgin. Really? I don't think so. And uh, James, his brethren James, he wrote a book. It's called the Book of James. You should read it sometime. Really interesting. All right, let's keep going. All right, keep your place in Matthew 13, and let's go to the verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. 
And he spake many things unto them in parables. What's a parable? It's, it's a story. It's an earthly story with a heavenly application. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And what's a sower? That's a farmer. He's sowing the seed in the ground. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. The birds came and got a, got a great dinner, right? Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Fruit. Some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, this is a very interesting thing. The disciples, uh, verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Very good question. And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Isn't that something? The Lord would give some to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to others, it's not. Let's take a look at something else. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3, Paul writes, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them, that are lost. Can you believe that? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid, hid to them that are lost. Now, I tell you what, I do absolutely believe anyone could be saved. I absolutely believe that. However, the Lord hides the gospel from some, believe it or not. When you love your sin more than you love the Lord, he will hide the gospel from you. He will deceive you. He will have you believe things that are not true. And you've got a whole bunch of churches in San Francisco that are openly sodomites. And they will absolutely tell you that they're saved. Absolutely tell you. And they, I, I honestly think they believe it too. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14 and verse 9, listen to this. And if the prophet be deceived, when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Wow. So, and I'm reading from a King James Bible. You know the one the Baptists say that they absolutely believe every word? Oh, yeah. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse, we'll start with verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. 
So they're deceived because of unrighteousness. Think about it. And with all deceivableness of un unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them. God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God deceives you, people. When you love your sin more than you love the Lord, he'll deceive you. That's scary. Let's go back to Matthew 13. I just want to make that point. Uh, let's see. Verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Jesus, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Jesus speaking, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which is Isaiah, the Greek rendering of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Now Christ is getting ready to explain the parable that he had just talked about. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. That's funny. They're uh, you know talking about the fowls of the air that devour it, and then when you read in the book of Revelation that they're uh, uh, a habitation of every unclean and hateful bird. I wonder, I guess the, uh, the devils are likened unto, like, vultures, you know, feeding on dead things, right? Or birds of prey, like hawks or falcons or eagles, that swoop down and kill and devour living things. I don't know, just a, just a thought. Verse 20. All right, so... Some people hear the word of the kingdom. They don't understand it. The wicked one comes and catches the seed of the gospel that was sown in their heart. And they're the seed by the wayside. Verse 20. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as here that heareth the word, and anon with joy received it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. So he endures for a little while. For when tribulation, that's trouble, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. I tell you what, if you go to the charismatic uh, camp, like TBN, they, this is them. This is this is them. They'll endure for a while, but when persecution and trouble comes, 
because of the word of God, they are offended. You better believe it. Oh, brother, you just didn't have faith. Uh, if you only had a faith, uh, you wouldn't be in persecution and tribulation. Bless a Jesus. Yeah. Jesus warned of persecution and tribulation. He warned that those in Christ would suffer these things. What kind of a gospel the charismatics are the so-called charismatics preaching? When trouble comes because of the gospel, they're offended. They dump it like a hot potato. Verse 22, He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitful, deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. I tell you what, when you want wealth more than you want the word of God, may the Lord give you the heart uh, the heart, you know, your heart's desire. Verse 22, But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. And I tell you what, that's how you tell if a tree's good or not, when it bears fruit. If somebody believes and they don't have any fruit, look out. Look out, people. All right, let's... Uh, Matthew 13. All right, turn to Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying. Now, a scribe was a, uh, a Jew that copied the Bible, and the Pharisees were a denomination of the Jews. Matter of fact, if you look in the Jewish encyclopedia and look up the word Pharisee, they will say it is the direct, it is the direct offshoot of modern Judaism comes from Pharisees. So, as opposed to the Sadducees. The Sadducees were another denomination of Jews, but they only believed in the five books of Moses. They didn't believe in the prophets or the writings, you know, Proverbs, Psalms. They didn't believe in any of that stuff. They only believed in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And they were generally the priests at the temple that did the sacrifices. When the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans under General Titus, the, Pharise uh, the Sadducees were pretty much wiped out. I mean, they were, they were wiped out and they had no temple, so they served no useful purpose. So they pretty much vanished from history. They're probably a lot, they were probably killed, most of them, if not all of them, I don't know. So, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy di disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? The tradition of the elders. Man-made traditions. It's not just the Catholic Church that has rituals. The Jews, back before the Catholic Church, had the same thing. So what they say? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, is there anything wrong with eating, washing your hands before you eat bread? Absolutely not. But they had turned this into a man-made tradition, a ritual. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So Jesus throws this back in their face. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Now, when you're talking about cursing, 
you're not just talking about saying, you know, your mom comes and says, Junior, clean your room. Oh, damn it, Mom, I don't want to clean my room. You know, we're not talking that. When you're talking a curse, cursing your mother or father, you're talking about somebody, you know, telling them, oh, go to hell. That's a curse. Uh, you're talking about a satanic thing where you're actually placing a curse or like a death curse on your mother and father. The Mendez brothers, uh, if you don't know who they were, they were two kids that uh, couldn't wait for their inheritance from their parents. So what did they do? They sped things up a little bit. They killed their parents. Okay. And God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou might be profited by me. In other words, um, they've turned the, the curse into a blessing. So a kid that said, Oh, mom and dad, go to hell or goes to a, a witch and has a curse placed on his parents. The Pharisees, the Jews, were saying, oh, well, what a, whatever this kid does, it's a gift. Cursing your parents is a gift? Verse 6, Jesus said, okay, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not, honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. See, the penalty and the, the law for cursing your parents was death. It's too bad they didn't do that to the Mendez brothers before they murdered their mother and father. And honor not his mother or his, his father or his mother, he shall be made free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You see, God's law called for the parents, the, the children that were cursing their parents, perhaps with murder in their heart. God, God gave the parents the, uh, the ability to bring them before the town elders and to say, this kid is, this kid is no good. And they, would, they actually had the authority to put him to death. And of course, the atheists will point this out and say, see, see, the Bible's evil. The Bible's evil. The parents are putting their children to death. Well, okay, yeah, that's true. But if you put the, the kid to death before they're born in an abortion clinic or a, a, pre, a partial birth abortion, the baby's head's popped out of the the woman's body and they they take a pair of scissors and cut its skull open and sever the spinal cord and then take a vacuum cleaner type device and suck up the brains and send them by FedEx to a medical laboratory. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Oh, it's not a baby. It's just a fetus. See, these people are hypocrites. This is why they can't hear the gospel. They'll never hear the gospel, because they love their sin more than they love God. It's okay to kill an unborn child, but a but a son or a, a, a son that wants to kill his parents, oh, that's wrong. Oh, yeah, if he wants to kill his parents, let him, you know. What did Jesus say? Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Well, ye hypocrites. Jesus is calling the Jews hypocrites here. Wow, he's, what is he, doesn't he know they're God's chosen people? What an idiot, right? Ye hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, this is uh, Isaiah. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, Vain means worthless, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. 
And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth, defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. In other words, it's not eating bread with un, your hands not washed that defiles the man. It's the evil, wicked things that you say, the, the false doctrines, the traditions of men, the commandments of men that come out of your mouth, the cursings. Those are what defiles the man. Verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, the disciples came to Jesus and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Jesus offended the Jews. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. It's going to be uh, weeding in the garden time, people. He says, let them alone. They be blind, leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And G uh, then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do ye, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught? You know, it goes down the toilet, right? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth, I mean, proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. All right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and verse. Oh, let's see. Let's take a look. We'll figure this out in a second. All right. Uh, let's see, verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes. What chief priests? Not the Catholic chief priests. These are going to be the Jewish chief priests. So he's going to suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. So Jesus is telling him, I'm going to have to go to Jerusalem, suffer many things, be killed, and on the third day I'm going to raise again, be raised again from the dead. And Peter is, you know, Oh no, that ain't going to happen. Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. What? Uh, doesn't the Catholic Church love to tell you Peter's the first pope? Well, Jesus just called Peter Satan. And he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. Remember Jesus said that all things that offend the, the angels would come and, uh, and gather all things out of the garden of that offend? Oh, yeah. Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after him, me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Hmm. 
For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? For the Son of Man shall come in his glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. And that is scary. Oh, yeah. All right. In the Bible, Jesus said, well, let's take a look. Let me read it again. All right, in Matthew 15, verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Think about that. When you think about that, about uh, plants that God the Father didn't plant, Think about that when you look at my playlist on the sons of God and what happened in Genesis 6. You know, there were plants that were not planted by the Lord. I know that's kind of interesting. God created Adam and God created the angels. But... Um, there was an unholy, unholy union there going on. I have probably 15 hours of study proving absolutely, positively, without a doubt, that in Genesis 6, that the fathers of the giants were the fallen angels, the sons of God. And there are people that will take the New Testament and use it to define what the Old Testament means. Well, in Job 38, the sons of God shouted for joy when the earth was created. Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. Where in the Bible does it say that the angels were created on the first day, or the second day, or the third day, or the fourth day, or the fifth day, or the sixth day. It doesn't. The angels were created, probably in all likelihood, prior to the earth being created. The Bible doesn't record the angels being recorded, uh, created on any day. But it says the sons of God shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. Well, Adam wasn't created until six days later. So the sons of God in the Old Testament were the angels. In the New Testament, when we're born again of the Spirit, where we become the sons of God. You've got to be careful using the Old Testament. Uh, the, the New Testament is a fulfillment of the Old Testament. But you can't always use the New Testament to define what the Old Testament means. So, that's what Jesus means when he says that uh, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. It's not a very popular doctrine. It's not an essential doctrine for, for salvation. But if you really want to be a student of the Word of God and understand why God destroyed the entire world in the flood why God commanded the Philistines and the giants to be exterminated, well, then you should take a look at my playlist, The Sons of God, Genesis 6. What can I tell you? In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 6, Jesus speaking, But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. A small millstone weighs 70 pounds. I'd like to see you try to swim in the ocean with a 70-pound weight tied around your neck. And all these, I tell you what, they're finding out that there's child sex rings. Australia, England, they're, they're uh, Scotland Yard. 
That's like the British English equivalent of the uh, FBI. They're in on it. There, there's, and it's happening here too, in the highest levels of government. And some of these people don't want girls; they want boys. Some of these men want young boys. And there's allegations that the um, so-called child protective services, they pull these kids out of these houses, uh, parents' houses for the most flimsy reasons. The kids go up missing. They disappear. Or they end up dead. I think they're feeding the sex rings. Check out Pizzagate on uh, Google sometime. It's at the very highest level of government. And there is no holy righteous indignation among the church. Probably the church is probably in on it. All the pedophiles in the Catholic Church and in the so-called Protestant Church. It's disgusting. You ever wonder why England and Australia wanted gun control? Now you know why. They, these sex rings. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he would drown in the depth of the sea. It would be better if you only lost your physical life. They're going to be losing a lot more. And those of you that don't believe in hellfire, I tell you what, you wait. You wait until you see what happens to these pedophile rings when the Lord finally returns and gets a hold of them. Matthew, uh, next verse, eight, uh, verse uh, Matthew 18, verse 7. Next verse. Woe unto the world because of offenses. Right? But whoso, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom that offense cometh. Oh yeah. Woe unto them, people. They're going to be in big trouble. All right. Turn to Matthew chapter 24. The end times chapter. Jesus was asked by his disciples, What shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? Matthew 24. There it is. But uh, the church doesn't believe that stuff anymore. All right, Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Jesus said that there wouldn't be one stone left upon another that should not be thrown down. So when the Jews tell you the Wailing Wall was part of the temple, they're lying, or Jesus is lying. So take your pick. Is Jesus lying, or are the Jews lying? Personally, I pick Jesus being truthful. In the book of Romans, we read in uh, chapter 3 and verse 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. And that includes me and you. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. In the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 14, Paul warns, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. In other words, don't listen to Jewish fables. You know, oh, the Wailing Wall was part of the temple. Uh, no, it's not. It never was. The Wailing Wall is not a part of the temple. Otherwise, Jesus is a liar. And I say, don't pay attention to Jewish fables. 
Verse 3, Matthew 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that ye are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. Fukushima just had an earthquake. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Uh, do the Jews hate the name of Jesus? Yeah. That's why they ever wonder why they call, they try to make you think his name's Yeshua. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. And, be, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Oh yeah. Remember the parable of the sower? When persecution comes, they're offended, and they turn away. Many, many people are going to be offended. They're going to betray each other. Church people are going to betray true Christians, and they're going to hate them. Because persecution is going to come, affliction, they're going to be killed, and they're going to be hated. Verse 11, And many false prophets shall, or, shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Well, in Matthew 26, verse 31, remember they were in the garden and the uh, the guards were coming to pick up Jesus and Jesus, Judas betrayed him with the kiss. You know, that's part. this is part of that story. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Verse 33. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. And what did Jesus tell him before the cock crows? Um, you shall deny me thrice. Oh yeah. And he did. They were all offended. All right, let's go to John. Chapter 6. I think I'm going to make this part 1 and finish up because I've got an entire chapter I need to read. Um, so this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.